Hello, welcome to my another session. In this session, I have a talk about the glandular epithelium. What is glandular epithelium? Some of the epithelial cells get modified into secreting cells and which forms the gland. If such gland or such secreting cells present in single among the non-secretory cell, then which forms the unicellular gland. If such secreting cells present in a group, then which forms multicellular gland. The unicellular gland, if it looks like a goblet shape, then it is known as goblet gland. Here, nucleus pushed towards the bottom because of the secreting granules or the Golgi body. So, most portion of this gland actually filled by the Golgi body and the secreting granules. And the nucleus present at the basal region, this is the nucleus and this is the microvilli and this is goblet shaped and which secrete the mucus. Such gland actually present in the elementary canal the intestine and may present in respiratory tract so this is the unicellular gland now come to the multicellular gland and this is the main task of this video such multicellular gland these are classified on the basis of different criteria. On the basis of structure, such multicellular gland broadly classified into two types. If it is tubular in structure, then it is known as the tubular gland. If it is sac-like structure, then it is known as secular gland or alveolar gland or acinar gland. If these glands have single main dock, then this gland known as the simple gland. If this gland have the Several main dogs, then these glands are known as the compound gland. So, the tubular gland may be two types. It may be simple if there is single main dog present, it may be branched or unbranched. If several main dogs present, then it may be compound. So, like this, secular also, it may be simple if single main duct present, if several main ducts present, then it is known as the compound. The simple, if single duct present, then these tubular glands are known as the simple. So, it may be Again, three types, simple, tubular, gland. Another may be the simple, coiled, tubular gland. Another may be the simple, branched, 
tubular gland. So in case of simple tubular, there is the single main duct present. It may be branched or it may be unbranched. If it branched, then it is known as the simple branched tubular gland. If it is unbranched, if it is straight line in structure, if the gland is straight tube-like structure, then, so these are the secretory cells and this is the simple tubular gland. If the gland, it is a straight tube structure, but the tube which may take the cord or the coiled, then the gland is known as the and these are the secretory cells. Here the tube of the gland get coiled. That's why it is known as the simple coiled tubular. The simple branched tubular here main single main duct present but here the lower portion of such tube divide into number of secondary tubes. So these are the secondary tubes. And this is known as the simple branch tubular gland because the main tube forms the secondary tubes. This simple tubular gland, this gland may present in the intestine. So intestinal glands mainly the simple tubular gland. And the simple coiled tubular gland the example is the sweat gland of the skin. We secrete the sweat. The sweat gland of the skin is the very good example of the simple coiled tubular gland. And the simple branched tubular gland, such gland may present in the stomach. So the gastric gland as well as uterine gland the glands which present in the wall of the uterus, these are the uterine gland. So the gastric gland and the uterine glands are the very good examples of the simple branched tubular glands. So these glands, so all these multicellular glands, these are actually present below the epithelium, below the epithelium or Sub epithelial connective tissue. Sub epithelial connective tissue. So these glands actually present below the epithelium or below the sub epithelium remain in the connective tissue of the sub epithelial connective tissue or most probably most away from the surface. The compound epithelium, here, there are several main dots are present. Suppose that this is the surface and this is the main duct and they have again several dots, several main dots and there are again several dots. Suppose that these are the several dots. So which form the compound tubular structure. So this type of this type of tubular gland having several number of main docks and each main dock, all the main dock uh, 
open in a common duct. This gland is known as the compound tubular gland. So this is the compound compound tubular gland. Such type of compound tubular gland actually present in kidney. So the glands which present in kidney, this is the example of the compound tubular gland where several main ducts are present. So one, two, three, four. So four number of tubular glands are there. Now come to the Shacular or the alveolar glands. It is two types. One may be the simple, another may be the compound. The simple alveolar or the shacular gland may be two types. It may be simple, shacular or alveolar gland. Or it may be simple branched alveolar gland. If it has single shack, then it is known as the simple, it is known as simple secular gland or alveolar gland. This simple secular gland or alveolar gland present in the skin. This is known as the sebaceous gland. So sebaceous gland is the sebaceous gland is the very good example of the simple alveolar or secular or acular gland your single sac present. If the sac get modified into number of sac, then it is known as the simple branched alveolar or simple branched SNR shaped cell. So suppose that this is the main duct here number of alveoli are present here and each one opens into the main duct. So these are the secreting cells and this is known as the simple branched alveolar or SNR gland. Such simple branched alveolar or the acinar gland may present in the skin. Again, the same example, the sebaceous gland, the sebaceous, sebaceous gland of skin. This is the oil gland. And the another important gland is the meborian gland. This gland actually present in the eyelid. So, mebobian gland of the eyelid. This is the example of simple branched SNR. So, here the simple secular are two types. If the single main duct present, this is known as the simple SNR. If the main duct uh, divide into or it, uh, if the main duct uh, uh, forms the branched then the duct is known as the simple branched SNR and the example is the sebaceous gland or the mebobian gland of the eyelid. If so many if the total gland composed of complex alveoli then the gland is known as compound acinar gland so suppose that this is the main duct 
and here as you know several mendox are present so these are the different mendox and here compound alveoli are present suppose that these are the compound acinin or the alveoli so these are the secreting alveoli these are the secreting compound alveoli there is several sac and these gland known as the compound acinar gland or the compound secular gland so this is the compound acinar gland or compound alveolar gland such type of gland actually present in our body in the mammary gland so the uh, mammary gland this is the compound acinar gland so very good example is the mammary gland so mammary gland is the example of compound acinar gland such compound acinar gland also known as racemous gland it also known as racemous gland so on the basis of the structure there are several glands if it is tubular then it is known as the tubular gland if it is sac like structure then it is known as the secular gland if there is single mendox it is known as simple if there is several mendox it is known as the compound again the simple uh, mendox if it may branched or it may on branch so there are several docs so another uh, several glands so another type of glands also present here some portion of the gland or Uh, this gland actually the compound tubular but the terminal portion dilates into a sac like structure and this gland actually known as the compound tubulo acilar gland so let me draw here so another special type of gland also present like the compound tubular gland so suppose that there are several dots so here the terminal portion of the duct dilates into a sac or alveoli so the terminal portion of each duct dilates into a alveolus or sac this is compound tubular like but the terminal portion of each tubule dilates into a sac this gland known as the compound tubulo acinar gland so this is the compound tubular type but the terminal portion of each tubule 
dilates into a acene that's why it is known as the compound tubulo acinar glands and such glands the main example of such gland is the salivary gland the main example is the salivary gland salivary gland of human another example may be the burner's gland the in, this is the intestinal gland the burner's gland and another gland may be the pancreatic gland so these are the three important examples of the compound tubulo acinar gland so there are several glands on the basis of the structure now come to the another criteria on which we may classify such glands so on the basis of the duct the glands may be exocrine or the endocrine so on the basis of duct the glands may be ducted gland or the gland may known as the ductless gland the ducted gland also known as exocrine gland exocrine gland here the secretion of the glands give out or uh, are poured on the surface or uh, released to the outside through the duct that's why it is known as the exocrine gland so most of the gland of our body are the exocrine gland for example salivary gland mucus gland gastric gland so so many glands are there another gland is known as the ductless gland there is no duct through which the secretion of glands may release to outside so here because of the lack of duct the secretion of this gland directly poured into the blood stream directly mixed with the blood stream that's why such gland is known as the endocrine gland so endocrine gland several glands are present in animals for example pituitary gland thymus gland adrenal gland and several glands are there so these are the different endocrine glands and some of the glands also present which act as both endocrine and the exocrine so one gland some portion some cells act as the exocrine part and some cells or some portion of this gland act as the endocrine part and this gland is known as the heterocrine heterocrine so heterocrine the example is the pancreatic the pancreatic gland here the islets of langerhans cells act as the endocrine part and the acinar cells act as the exocrine part likewise testes the the cells which secrete some of the cells secrete the testosterone hormone and the follicles the seminiferous tubules act as the exocrine so these are the glands which act as both exocrine and the endocrine glands and these are known as the 
heterokine. So on the basis of presence of presence of duct, the glands may be three types. The ductate of the exocrine gland, ductless of the endocrine gland, and another may be the heterocrine gland. So now come to the another type of criteria on which we can classify the glands. So now come to the another criteria by the secretion. So what type of secretion actually released from the glands? On the basis of such secretions, there are again several types. Suppose that, so on the basis of the secretion, on the basis of the secretion, which type of secretions actually released from the glands? So on this basis, the glands may be several types. One may be the mucous gland. One may be the serous gland. And another may be the mixed gland. So on the basis of these secretions, there are three types of glands. If the secretion which is uh, mucous or the slimy viscous, if the secretion is viscous and slimy, then the gland is known as the mucous gland. And uh, the example is the goblet cell or the gland or the esophageal gland, esophageal gland. Here the secretion is viscous or the slimy in nature. If the secretion is watery fluid, watery fluid, then the gland is known as the serous. If the watery fluid like substance secreted from the gland, then the gland is known as the serous gland. So for example, uh, for example, the uh, watery secretion actually secreted from our uh, salivary gland, for example, parotid gland. Parotid gland, this is the one type of salivary gland. Another type of glands are there, the secretions are both it is mucous or the watery. The secretion of some glands are both slimy as well as watery. And such gland is known as the mixed gland. And here the secretion is both types. It may be slimy or it may be watery. And the example is the salivary gland, the sublingual and the submandibular gland. Sublingual and submandibular gland of the human. These are the another two salivary glands. So on the basis of the secretion, if we secrete the viscous or the slimy, it is the mucous. If watery, then the gland is known as the serous. If the both type present, then it is known as the mixed. So another type of secretions also secreted from the glands and such secretions are not under such category. And such gland is known as the miscellaneous gland. So such gland is known as the
miscellaneous gland. So here the secretion of such gland not under the category of slimy, not under the watery, not under the mixed type. Here it is the another specific type of secretions are there. That's why the gland is known as the miscellaneous gland. The, for example, the seminal vesicle, the seminal vesicle, this is the gland of the male reproductive system and which secret the viscoid material, viscoid material, the secretion, it is the viscoid type, viscoid material. Another uh, gland may be the sebaceous. This is the oil gland of the skin and which uh, secret the greasy material. Greasy material. And another uh, example may be the Serumen gland, serumen gland, and this is the gland of the ear, internal. So this is the another uh, gland which present actually in the middle ear, and which secrete the ear wax. So waxy material actually secreted. It secrete the ear wax. So the, the secretion of seminal vesicle, sebaceous gland and the serumen gland, these are the specific type of materials, not under the slimy, not under the watery, not under the mixed type. So on the basis of the secretion, these are uh, several types. Now come to the another type of criteria on which glands are classified. How actually uh, glands give out the secretions on the basis of the manner of which the secretion released from the gland. So the glands may be three types, apocrine, merocrine and the holocrine. So on the basis of manner of secretions, the gland may be three types. One may be the merocrine, merocrine, epocrine, and holocrine. Here the gland release only the secretions. So here the gland release only the only the secretions. There is no loss of any part of cytoplasm of the gland and such gland is known as the merocline gland where the gland only give out only the secretions not any uh, part of the cytoplasm and this gland is known as the merocline gland so example is the goblet and the sweat gland goblet gland or the sweat gland of the skin. They only release the secretions. Another type of glands also present where the gland release the secretions with the part of the very little portion of the cytoplasm and such gland is known as the 
epocrine in case of epocrine gland some part of the cytoplasm is loosed with the secretion of the gland and the good example is the mammary gland and the uterine gland mammary gland and the uterine gland these are the epocrine gland another type of gland is there where the total cell released from the gland or the the whole cell actually released with the secretion and this type of gland is known as the holocrine gland here the total cell the whole cell released with the secretion and this type of gland example is the ovary and the testes so the such type of gland present in testes and ovary and somehow sebaceous gland may regarded as sebaceous gland may also regarded as it is one type of holocrine gland so there are several criteria on which we may classify the glands so i hope that you may clarify all these things if you like then click on my another video thank you for clicking